to a young kid that's been through something like I have been through, I think my biggest point of advice would be find something positive in each day. And if you can't find it, if nobody else brings it to you, create something. And I really think it's that act of creation that helps you stay positive, keeps your mind off of the obvious, which is the injury. My name is Phil Smaji. I'm from here in Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Grew up on a small farm just outside of town, surrounded by goats, brothers, and bikes. So they kind of all clashed into one big, chaotic, awesome childhood. Riding motorcycles around the farm and snowboarding in the winter. And we were lucky enough to have two parents that not only did they support our riding, they both rode themselves. They met at a motocross track. We had a track to ride on, we had obstacles to ride on, we had these riding areas which we wouldn't have been able to have in the city. Here we have the Magical Acres barn. Dad built a climbing wall, made a foam pit so we could practice our flips off of bikes. Rain, sleet, snow, whatever didn't matter, we could skate and ride our bikes in the half pipe. I spent about as much time in a barn as the goats did, so I guess that's why I get along so well with goats. that enabled us to focus on what we were passionate about, and I really think that's part of the reason I've been able to do it for so long. As soon as we found out about action sports, that's all we wanted to do, so that's all we did do. As soon as I got good enough to where I was kind of drawing a crowd riding around the local spots, my brother and I, we transformed that into a riding show that we traveled across the country doing and actually wound up on America's Got Talent. Give it up for Spazzy Brothers Riding Show. We had them build a farm. We rode over the barn and had these hay bales and all this stuff. So we've definitely stayed grounded because of our upbringing. When I had won my first X Games, I asked the company owner, can I do my own board design now? And he's like, yeah, if you do a kickflip over a cow, you can have a pro model. And I, I know he was joking, but I took him seriously being a farm boy dork. I'm like, hey, well, I don't have cows. How about a goat? And I sent the video to the, my sponsor, and he was blown away that I actually went home and did this. And so we took the still frame out of that video, and we turned it into a cartoon, slapped it on the bottom of my board, and that was my first pro model board. In my career, the thing I'm most proud of is all of the stuff that I've done filming with Nitro Circus, which was my childhood dream. To get to that level was kind of the culmination of all of my dreams since I started riding a bike. Magical adventure. Going to Travis's house and riding his bike, that made him open his eyes like, whoa, this, this guy can ride. Oh, <laughs> amazing! Yeah. Well, I didn't think I was gonna do that when I woke up this morning. So I had just filmed these few clips for Action Figures, the first movie. But I think I might have got one clip, and it might have only been that tree backflip crash, and it kind of opened the door to filming. He invited me to kind of jump on that more full time. I gotta give credit to my wife for the link up with Nitro because she was the original badass and then I just kinda went through the door that she opened by being the first woman to backflip. I commented on a video one day of his and then he was private messaging me and <laughs> said I should, he wanted to train me for Enduro Cross. We were training together, we were going to races together, we were performing in shows together, so it was like I had the ultimate teammate that I lived with. <laughs> The fear level was higher for action figures too. I knew it was gonna be gnarlier, I knew it was gonna be scarier, and I guess that was the hardest thing for me to cope with was being scared every day. Imagine going into the office every day and there could be a dude waiting around the corner with a baseball bat to smack you in the face. That's kind of how I relate to filming with action figures too, because I knew whatever we were signed up for to do the next day, it was gonna be the scariest thing I'd done. <laughs> so it was like, I either have to get a really good crash, or get a really good trick, hopefully both. <laughs> and somehow I was able to get a bunch of each. Go to the hot dog, get a beer. That was amazing, are you okay? He's good.
And I wanted to get as many shots in this video as I possibly could. So what better thing to do at a Razor event than break the world record for distance jumping? Yeah! We're talking a $50,000 Razor, $100,000 jump set up. Like, I would never be able to try this in my life if I didn't try this now. I want everyone to yell if they think he's going to make it. As an outsider looking in, watching the videos growing up, I thought they just, you know, just wing it, just send it. But after hanging out with Travis for the first year filming, it is insane the amount of mathematical calculations that go into it. The only thing that we didn't take into calculation was that my eyes were bigger than the landing. I had reached the speed I needed to just break the record, but I still had like 250 feet left in the run. So I made the decision to go pedal to the floor. Here we go, here we go. That's fast, that's fast. You lost! Where I was in the air, and the wind that I caught up there, it was pretty much like a kite. The bottom of the razor is solid, so it caught that wind and just carried. Now that I've watched all the videos, there was so much bone crunching, metal breaking, terrible noise going on, and it was pure silent inside the razor. It was just like a slow motion, silent black and white film. So it doles out all the other senses and just focuses everything to live. Then when the guys came over and started cutting me off of the jaws of life, my hands were so twisted, so weird, that I thought I had shattered my forearms. Is your back broke? Maybe. Legs? Maybe. Can you feel your legs? Not really. Uh -uh. Yeah, Watch his arm, guys. Watch his arms. His arms hurt. Sorry, dude. No, dude, don't apologize, man. You're going to be OK, dude. No, you did. You're OK, man. You're going to be fine. Okay. All right, buddy. Hey, love you, brother. We'll see you in a little bit, man. They had uh, called my wife and told her that she needed to come down there. We drove through the night, and we got there at 5.30 in the morning, and that was really hard to just walk in and just see him flat on his back. Or shot the landing just a wee bit. I ended up breaking my neck, both arms, collarbone, toe, ribs. Pretty much hurt all my feelings. They did a fusion of the C3 through C7 vertebrae. The worst part that pinched the cord was C5, which controls your hands and your arms. And four, five, and six were all broken. They had had a, a tube down my throat, and I couldn't move anything, so I couldn't press my call button. I couldn't scream to get my nurse. I was sitting there alone, just the worst place I've ever been in my life. Things got super, super dark, and it looked like it was over. The nerve pain of when stuff started trying to fire again and hit the blockages, they call part of that hypersen nerve hypersensitivity, and it got so bad to where at least once a day, it would feel like somebody's taking a sledgehammer and breaking every bone in my body over and over and over again. That was the... It was like that. He summed it up for me pretty good. The moment where I was able to move my left big toe, that was kind of like mental ammunition to continue on through the whole rest of this crazy journey. Really, we're gonna get in some finger movements and I actually got my clutch finger to fire. Uh. I remember when he moved his clutch finger for the first time. We were like, yes, look at your 
your clutch finger. Oh my goodness, look at that. Yay! It tastes so much better when you do it yourself. When Sarah got there the next morning, she came and it just, it changed like the whole outlook of everything. And it made it so I could be where I'm at right now. You have the dark times and the those dark moments, but you know like you have to cheer up. You have to look at something to be positive about. I am squeezing in a brake lever and my hand is on a grip. Goat therapy, and now we got a longer reach than I've had ever before. There we go. <laughs> Road to recovery has completely changed the end course of my injury. They dealt with doctors, they helped with paperwork, they helped with stuff that we don't know anything about being motorcycle riders, but at the same time, they were there for us emotionally. That's as big or bigger than any of the financial things that they've done. They are just good-hearted people. They're not doing this to make money, they're just doing this because they know they can help because they've been through it and they want to help ease the situation for everybody else. They become like your family. It might be what 10 year old kids do, but I don't care because I still kind of am that. I believe in upbringing in action sports is the best training for everyday life. Every time you skate, every time you ride, you're gonna crash, you're gonna mess up, you're gonna fail. And that passion brings you back to keep trying. First steps over, I got in. Now, uh, where's that world record jump again? Point me in the right direction. <laughs> the most effective form of therapy that I've done is a little known sport called pow surfing. It's literally snowboarding without bindings. It made me feel the flow that I never thought I would feel again. He's able to really forget that he's injured and just feel like his old self and that's what I want him to be doing is anything that brings joy and puts a smile on his face. <laughs> oh my crap, this is insane. I really can't thank the guys that specialize enough because they provide me with the e-assist bike. Well, they're making my first ride extra therapeutic. Oh, bro, <laughs> see you later, Gary. Ah, he's going for it, though. Passion will drive you to do things that no therapist will ever get you to do, that nothing else can get you to do. But if you have enough passion, you can just push to new levels that you would not ever believe. And it has driven me to be more active than I could ever have imagined. I will get back on a bike and I will be wheeling again. And heck, I want to backflip again. And I want to get back to performing and motivating, hopefully, kids across the entire world, showing that you can get back to doing whatever it is you want to do, no matter what obstacles you have to overcome. <laughs>